how to enter through the refuse gate into the city but it was for exit and it is interesting because even the name gives it an idea of what it means this refuse gate was a place where they will take the refuse out of the city if this gate was not there then the atmosphere the environment in the city will be polluted so it was a place where they will take the refuse interestingly that refuse gate at the outside was the place called Gehenna now Gehenna was a dump site of the city of Jerusalem and that is where we get the Kiswahili word Jehanamu you know Jehanamu the lake of fire so the lake of fire in the book of revelation the when Jesus was speaking to John for 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 Christ to make sense of what he was saying he used the same thing those who are without the city will be thrown into Gehenna now why was it called Gehenna and why is it associated with fire it is because this being the dump site it was always on fire burning the refuse all right some of you who understand dandora you have an idea of what that means and i pray that one of these days the the dump site in dandora will be removed from there because uh, we cannot have the dump site um, among where people are living it must be outside okay amen glory to god so it was always with smoke refuse being burned it was called gehenna and that is where they will put the dump uh the 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 garbage of the city but it would be removed out of the city through the refuse gate now spiritually speaking what is this this is the grace and the anointing to bring correction in the city so that the city is not polluted now this one is very serious and i want to walk carefully here because uh it's very easy for someone to misunderstand what i'm about to say but you must understand that this is a principle in the church that we should never lose praise god i believe for example that this refuse gate is largely associated of course with the leadership but particularly with the prophetic Now when this gate is established and there is a gatekeeper at that door this is a person or these are the people that God gives discernment to discern refuse that is in the church hmm. glory to God they see disorder they see sin they see uh misbehaviors misdemeanors things that should not be in the city and they raise an alarm and they say this one should not remain in the city so out through the refuse gate let me tell you if you are a pastor you must have courage to transact with this door glory to god you cannot be a faithful man of god or woman of god if you don't want to deal with that door it's very possible for someone to say you know i want to be a good pastor i want to be a good man i don't want to raise dust so let things remain as they are the problem is this if we allow things to remain as they are then they will pollute the life in the city and there's going to be a problem you remember the book of first corinthians and uh, some of you can go and study that book oh god help me help me i don't want to stay on this for a long time but first corinthians for your information was written to deal with the refuse gate that is the whole reason why the book of first corinthians was written and second corinthians was also written to address the same thing but also now to 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 bembeleza those who remained after the refuse left because let me tell you my friends and this is uncomfortable for there to be refuse there has to be human involvement because refuse does not produce itself it is produced by people and those are the people who are sitting in the church aya so if you are to deal with refuse you will also rub people the wrong way because it is 
people that produce the refuse. But I want you to know the grace of God is not to throw away the people. No, it is to separate them from their refuse. Pastor, what are you preaching today? Okay, this is the word of God. Praise God. A good example, Paul speaks to the Corinthian church and he says, okay, I hear there is a man among you that is uh, having an affair with his father's wife. Can you imagine? And Paul tells the church, you would gladly accept that person to remain among you. And probably the man was prophesying. The man was moving in the gifts of the spirit. The man probably was very prominent in the church. So the church was allowing this man to remain there. But Paul now speaking. And now he wants to deal with the refuse gate. He says, uh, what you need to do, gather yourself as a church. And then he tells them, when you gather together, my spirit will be there. But then, have you noticed that is a scripture we use when we find an excuse not to go to church? What did you tell your pastor the last time you didn't go to church? Pastor, I'm not going to come, but my spirit is with you. And because, uh, the reason why you are not able to attend church is because it was raining. Now let me say this clearly. If you don't come to church and you are still around, you have not traveled. The truth is your spirit is not with us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The reason why Paul says my spirit is with you is because Paul was writing that letter when he was in another city. So even if he wanted to come, he wouldn't come because he was in another city. It's not that he was in the neighborhood and found an excuse not to come to church. So he said, now because I cannot come even if I want to, gather yourself together. And when you gather yourself together, now I'm using my own words, open the refuse gate, deliver that person to the devil. What was he saying? Throw them to Gehenna. Not the lake of fire, the one who will throw, people will be thrown in uh, the second coming of Christ, but exit them out of the city. And he says, peradventure, their spirits will be saved when their body is destroyed. You know the good thing in the book of Second Corinthians, when Paul now addresses the same thing. He said, I thank God that brother got scared and he repented of his sin. But thank God, the refuse was removed out of the city. This is a very serious matter. And if you are listening to me and you are a pastor, let me tell you, there has to come a time when we deal with refuse. It's not easy, it's not comfortable, but it's important. Can we go to the other one? Let's jump to the next verse, verse 15. Let's read together out and loud. One, two, three, go. Okay, that's not out and loud, my friends. Raise your voice a little bit. Hallelujah. It, 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 let me tell you, the reason why I am on your case now, Sumbua, Sumbua, I, I know we are in November. Watu wanaanza kubweka. So, jichangamuke. Yonikisulimzuri, jichangamushe. <laughs> Let's keep alive. Hallelujah. Let's read that one, one, one more time. One, two, three, go. Shalom, the son of uh -huh, leader of the district of Mizpah, repaired what? The fountain gate. He built it, covered it, hung its doors with the bolts and bars, and repaired the wall of the pool of Shela by the king's garden as far as the stairs that go down from the city of David. Are you ready for this one? This is going to be a very important gate. And you must understand how the kingdom of God operates. So this is going to be number six. The fountain gate. One more time. Somebody say the fountain gate. Now this is how the fountain gate operates. I want us to go to John chapter 9 verse 1. And um, at this point. Case in point, I want two volunteers uh, who can come and help me to preach. Uh, they should be young people because I don't want to be in problems. Alice, I think um, I can work with you. Please come. And uh, Evans, come. I want to show you how this fountain gate works. 
So Alice, you'll stand here. Just come and stand here. On an elevated place. And then Eva's, well, kwa hapo chini. Hallelujah. So, I will give this illustration as we read this scripture to understand how the fountain gate works. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from Now this is a man. A man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him saying, "Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind?" Jesus answered, "Neither this man, Evans, you never sinned. Hallelujah. No, his parents sinned, but that what? The works of God should be revealed in him. Next verse. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm in the light of the world. Aha. Uh -huh. And by the way, that's the scripture the preacher preached in 1987 December and I gave my life to Jesus hallelujah may the lord bless that man may he live forever hallelujah when he had said these things what did he do he spat on the ground made clay with the saliva Jesus himself and then kindly turn to me and what did he do with the saliva the mud he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now notice this man was born without eyes. There was an empty socket. There was no eye. So Jesus could not heal the eyes because there was no eye. He created the eyes. So what did he do? He applied the eyes with clay. Now it reminds you Genesis is that not so when Jesus wanted to create I mean God wanted to create man so he is now creating eyes that are not there but then when Jesus applies the clay tell your neighbor fountain gate next verse he said to him now see did he say that I declare see uh -uh. he said go wash in the pool of Siloam there are some miracles God will not give you he will send you my God glory to God go wash in the pool of Siloam what is the meaning of Siloam in bracket sent in other words jesus told him go to the one i have sent you will understand so he went and washed now when the blind man was with jesus the only thing he got was mud but when he was sent to the pool he washed his eyes and what did he do he came back saying now why am I giving you this scripture? It's because the pool of Siloam was at the fountain gate. In other words, if the church does not have a fountain gate, men will not see. Okay. So Jesus, when he was healing this man, he transacted with that gate called the fountain and there was a pool there and in this, incidentally if you go back to Nehemiah chapter 3 ladies and gentlemen that word fountain gate in Hebrew is actually eye gate it is the gate of the eye that men go and they are healed what is the significance and what is the application of this scripture? In every local church like this one, we must learn how to open the gate and allow those people Christ has sent to enter. Oh, Jesus. 
Have you ever met people who say, you know, pastor, uh, me, I, I, I don't deal with men of God. For me, I deal with Jesus. Let me tell you. It doesn't matter how strong your relationship with Jesus is. If you come to him, he will send you to the pool. He will tell you something like this. Uh, my sister, you have come to me for your healing. But there is a man I have sent. Go to him. Because he is the one with water. Oh God. Oh Jesus. And when you go to him, you will find water to apply on your eyes so that you can see. If you don't have a sent one, when we look at your eyes, we'll only see mud. You appear to have eyes, but you are not seeing. You need the water of the sent one so that you can see. And as a pastor, you need to understand one thing. It doesn't, okay, let me use that one. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. On your own, you will not make people see. Now, one of the things I've observed is this, and I don't know, Pastor Gigi, you have ever noticed. You know, as, as, a, as, as a pastor of your church, you, you, you do a series. And you prepare your sermon so well, the notes, the introduction, everything is flowing well. And you preach powerfully. People just look at you. Then one day you invite a visiting preacher. My friend, they have an English you don't have. Huh? They have a style that you don't have. And that person comes and preaches to your people. And everybody is shouting and dancing. And, and then after the service, they come and tell you, Pastor, thank you for bringing that man of God. The things he said, I have never heard. And then you as the pastor, you saying, this is the same message I preached last week. What do you mean you have never heard? I don't know, as a pastor, you may get very offended. Because you may think your people don't believe in your anointing. No, they believe in you. But... <laughs> not hearing what you're saying. So what you need is to have a fountain gate where you open for anointings to come. Mm, you say, okay, this is a season of the apostle. Let the apostle come. And when the apostolic anointing comes and begins to teach the people, what happens? They come with a certain kind of water. People begin to see. In other words, people begin to understand. I know some of you, when you come to these lunch hour meetings, you get so blessed. True or false? And then you go to your pastor on Sunday. You sleep on him. You think he's not anointed. No, no, no. He is anointed. That is why now a, another person should preach to you who is not your pastor, the one you are used to. And he will tell you the same thing your pastor told you. But what is going to happen when this one tells you, your eyes open. Mm, my God, my God, my God. Every local church must have a fountain gate. An entrance where we allow five-fold ministers to enter. Am I making sense, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And let me tell you, of these three, there of these five, there are three that are very key. Now, in, in the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter 23 or chapter 25. I don't want us to go there. Jesus enters Jerusalem, chapter 23. And then he says, How I have longed to gather you as a hen gathers the chick, but you will not. The days are coming, Jesus said, where your house will be left to you in desolation until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Now, when will Jerusalem say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord? According to that context, it is when Jesus speaking, you will know the wise men, the prophets, and the scribes that he has sent. Who are those? The apostles, the prophets, and the teachers. When we discern an apostle, some, not someone with the title, apostle, someone with the anointing and the grace of the apostolic, we discern them, we open the door, we say, come speak to the people of God. We have received the Lord. Oh God. And what is going to happen? You are blessed. Oh glory to God. When you discern a prophet who carries a prophetic mantle, and we open that fountain gate. We design a teacher of the word. And we open the fountain gate. What happens? The city is healed. Okay, thank you my brother and sister. Can you appreciate them? The fountain gate is very important. Number seven. Let's go to verse 26. I think I'll finish with this one and then we make a prayer. Are we learning today? Verse 26. Let's read together out and around. One, two, three, go. Moreover, the Nethanim. Now, underline that word Nethanim. Who dwelt where? In Ophel. Made repairs as far as the place in front of the what? The water gate. Toward the east. And on the projecting tower. Number seven. We have the water gate. Somebody say the water gate. Now, for those of you who are writing, before I explain it clearly, the Bible says the people who repaired this water gate were called the Nethanims. Who are the Nethanims? The Nethanims was a name given to the slaves of the temple. The temple of God had slaves. And these slaves were to work in the temple all their lives. And when it came to the building of this water gate, it is only the temple slaves that could handle that gate. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know there is a gate. There is a gate in the city of God that is called the water gate. And not any believer can handle that gate. It is only handled by those people that have become the slaves of the temple. Oh my God. In the book of Acts chapter 6, is it chapter 6 verse 4? Can we rush there? Go to verse 3. Therefore brethren, seek out from among you. Now who is speaking here? These are the apostles. Who had been given the mandate and the mantle from Jesus. They say, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. What business was that? Taking care of the poor. In other words, the early church was establishing what we call the ministry of the deacon. The people who help with the administration and the physical activities of the local church. So the apostles are saying, identify the people who will fill that space. But what do they say about themselves in verse 4? Let's read together out and loud. But we will give ourselves continually to what? To prayer and the ministry of the word. In other words... The apostles, man of God, determined we shall be the slaves of the church. We are not going to handle anything but what? Prayer and the word. Spiritually speaking, it is those kind of people that God anoints to raise that gate. And let me tell you, they are among us. Oh my God. And if God has called you to become a slave of the temple, 
and begin to handle things out of the temple, God says you are disqualified from this gate. Where can we find these men and women? Hmm. Let's go to Ezra chapter 8. No, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1. So have you seen the Nethanims? Those who have given themselves to what? The ministry of prayer and the word. They are the ones that built this get. In Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1, we are going to read a big portion. Just give me 5-6 minutes and then we will be done. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1. Now this, the wall has been built. The gates are there. And the Bible says Ezra came in Jerusalem. And Ezra came to institute the law of God. My father. And when he Decided to speak to the nation in Jerusalem. Guess what? He met them at the water gate. Now let's read and see what it says. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of what? Notice he didn't go to the fish gate. He didn't go to the refuse gate. He went to the water gate. Because all these things are prophetic imageries. Okay? And if you want to understand who Ezra is, go and study the book of Ezra. He committed himself to the law of God to understand it and to teach it. He was a Nethanim. My God. And he says, in front of the water gate, and they told Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses. In other words, the scripture which the Lord had commanded Israel. Verse 2. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate. Someone continue for me. From what time to what time? You, you, you people, you say at the, our services are long. What about you come to a service from morning, let's assume it is 7 a.m. Till midday, there is no singing. There is no singing. There is no praying. There is no announcement. It is a man standing with the scriptures and teaching the word from morning till midday. God give us this church that is addicted to the scriptures. Think with me. If you are there, could you handle this? And then the Bible says, both the men and women, those who could understand, and the ears of all the people who are attentive to the book of the Lord. So there you, you have to be so attentive when you are dealing with the water gate. Look at the next verse. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood which they had made for that purpose. And beside him at his right hand, uh, all these names that are written. Next verse. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened the Bible, what did the people do? You, you are listening to the word sitting. True. Them, they were standing as he was reading the scripture and explaining the scripture from morning till midday. There is a point I want to bring across before we finish. Go to the next verse. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered what? 
Now, l- l- let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? Uh, okay, I-, I know as preachers, we, we like asking people to say amen. Eh? Every point, say my amen. I know there are some people who like encouraging preachers so much. Even without a point, they say amen. But notice here, they only said amen after the message. In other words, your amen should be a response of understanding. If you have not understood, you cannot say amen. True. So after they have understood what he was saying, what did they say? Amen and amen. While lifting up their hand and they bow their heads and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. In other words, worship does not precede the word. Are you people? Okay. Munanielewa. Worship is a response of the word. Kaya zalama kaya. So when the word was declared and preached, what did they do? They worship the Lord. Their faces to the ground. Next verse. Uh, all these people. And the people stood in their place. Verse 8. So they read. Let's read this out aloud. One, two, three, go. They read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. Now, what is the water gate? It is the anointing of the teacher. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you, we need that. I believe by the grace of God, the Lord has raised us, among other things, to become a water gate in this city. My God. But let me tell you, my friends, for you as a child of God, you must love the word. There is a curse in this city. People don't love the word. Mm. Maybe one of the weeks we need to say and do a poster and spread it around. The week to capture your stars. Now to say what is wiki yaku shika nyota. Let's try one day. <laughs> now that's, that's on a light note. Siku ya kutabiria ama wiki ya kutabiria watu. Mashida yao. Let me tell you. That is what the city loves. We need to raise a church, ladies and gentlemen, that are, is addicted to the scripture. Who loves the word. My God. And let me tell you, let me give you a big statement. If the word of God cannot produce anything, nothing will. Let me repeat again. If the preaching and the teaching of the word does not produce your deliverance, no anointed minister can produce your deliverance. And we must be lovers of scripture. Time is up. Time is up. I pray in the name of Jesus. May God give you an addiction of the word of God. Yeah. Glory to God. That when the word of God is being preached. And the word of God is explained. Your heart comes alive. And we declare in Jesus mighty name. The apostolic house will be a water gate. We shall not compromise the teaching and the preaching of the word of God. It's going to be the Bible says. Oh glory to God. It's going to be what? The Bible says. Concerning your situation, the Bible says. Concerning the need you want for God to do for you, the Bible says. That breakthrough you want God to do for you, the Bible says. Glory to God. We are not going to come here and give people philosophy and human ideas. No, we shall base everything we preach on the doctrine.
doctrine of the word of God. And I believe, I say I believe that from this apostolic house, great men and women will arise in our generation that will set nations on fire. Kayamazo Kapaya. Stand up on your feet right now. Just lift up your hands and begin to pray in tongues. Just worship the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen the water gate in this ministry. Strengthen the fountain gate. Oh, my Father. Zayema Sanderia Zakuria Zateria Zataya Mazukata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just pray in the spirit right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, give us men and women that are hungry for the truth of your word. Father, we pray, send to us men and women that you have assigned to be help us. Father, we open the door that the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors will come in and out among your people that the eyes of men will see. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My God. Let's finish this because of time. Oh, glory to God. Let's finish this because of time. Can I invite you right now just to get your offering ready? Those of you that are watching and you're being ministered to by the word of God, we welcome you. Just partner with us in the ministry of giving and receiving. And I know God is going to bless you. We are going to be back here again tomorrow. We have to finish this matter. And as I've told you, we are not just explaining and teaching, but we are installing these things in the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the fountain get be strengthened. Let the refuse get be strengthened. Let the water get be strengthened. May God cause you to be a lover of the word of God. Glory to God. How about this, ladies and gentlemen? Tomorrow, we'll begin to teach at one. At what time? We begin to preach at one. We are going to take one hour to preach the word so that we can activate the water gate. Amen. I'm serious. One hour. From one to 150, 155 is going to be teaching the word. So find your way here quarter to one so that we can have all the time that we need to have. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So give your offering. Be generous even as the Lord has blessed you. And uh, if you have M-Pesa, you can use the till number. If you have cash, put in the offering bag. May God bless you in Jesus' name. This is the air I breathe. This is the air Oh, Jesus. Your very presence living in me. This is the Bye.